Thank you for this day. Sorry about my sins yesterday. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for the ones I don't know about yesterday. The ones I do know about stick at me like a sore thumb. But anyways, please forgive me. Wash me clean. Lord, I'm getting ready to do the devotions. Give us something that will stick with us all day today. Thank you. Amen. Okay, let's get started. Monday, May 18th, Open Doors. Praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the Word to speak the mystery of Christ. Colossians 4.3 How can we spread the love of Jesus? By praying for open doors, then looking for them. There are hundreds of ways. Invite friends to a church event. Tell others about Turning Point Television and Radio, or that of another ministry you enjoy. Give away a Christian book. Wear a t-shirt that expresses your faith. Invite unsaved friends to a cookout and start building bridges. Tell your rideshare driver about a Bible verse you've been pondering. Keep small Bibles with you to give away. Put a Bible verse of word of testimony on social media. Learn to say, God bless you, when you pick up your fast food order. Pray for a missionary Pray for a missionary God puts on your heart. Financially, support your local church and other ministries that are sharing the gospel. Take your Bible to school. Read your Bible at airports. Consider going on a mission trip. Learn a presentation of the gospel message. Find someone who needs a caring touch and minister to we have the privilege of expressing the love of Jesus everywhere in the world. Let's seize the opportunity. Share his love by telling what the Lord has done for you. Share his love by sharing your faith. William J. Reynolds. Community is Love by Brent Nasma. Monday, May 18th, 2020. Scripture reading, Colossians 3, 12 to 14. And over all these virtues I love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Colossians 3, 14. Sharon is part of a community of women who do life together. They study the Bible together pray for each other, and support each other in everything they go through in life. There is no judgment or looking down on someone for not knowing the correct answer to a question. When Sharon's brother was hospice care and she was his primary caregiver, this group supported and loved her in every way possible. And Sharon has precipitated that love by caring for other women in the group as they have experienced major challenges. All of us have times in our lives when we need extra measures of support and love. When things are difficult, or when we mess up and feel as if no one can love us, we need to be cared for and loved. And there are times when we need to care for others, especially when they mess up or are going through difficult times. Paul describes a new life that follows Christ's life into because of Christ's sacrifice. Followers of Christ put off their old selfish ways and put on all the new virtues they can have because of Christ. And over all of 
those things we are called to put on law, which pulls everything else together. Unconditional love is essential and integral to community. Father, help us to show your love for others and experience others' love in our communities. For Jesus' sake, amen. May 18th, a soft answer. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a hard word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15.1. Roger Dawson is known as America's premier business negotiator. He spent his life training business executives to negotiate good deals in tense settings. His advice? Be careful what you say at the beginning. If the other person takes a position with which you totally disagree, don't argue. Arguing always intensifies the other person's desire to prove himself or herself right. Solomon said something similar nearly 3,000 years ago. Never has society so needed this advice. Our world is filled with angry words between heads of state, between political leaders, between politicians, between newscasters and commentaries. Our electronic media doesn't help. It often amplifies the anger. If we're not, if, if we aren't careful, the world's angry spirit can seep into our marriages, homes, and churches. Proverbs 15.1 teaches us to underreact. If someone approaches you in an angry spirit, you gain the advantage over them by remaining calm. When you, when you angry with someone, it makes them defensive and locks them into their position. That's not a winning strategy. It takes the Holy Spirit's calmness within us. But we should take Proverbs 15.1 as a guide. A gentle answer deflects anger. Harsh words make tempers flare. Psalms. 149. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timber and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. 
He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. May 18th, inspiration or impulse. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, each esteem others better than themselves. Philippians 2.3. Two men were riding their horses down a country road, discussing the question of motivation. One believed were capable of pure motives, even without Christ. The other disagreed. They came to a ditch where a pig had gotten tangled up in fencing and was struggling to excavate himself. The latter gentleman got down in the mud and managed to free the animal Though he, though he ruined his clothing. Resuming their trip, the first man said, There, that was a selfish act of kindness. But his friend replied, No, it was pure selfishness. The only reason I helped that pig was to save myself from the guilt and torment of worrying about him all day. Without Christ, it's impossible to operate in true love and godly motivations. But as we grow in Him, our motives gradually improve and we're increasingly compelled by His love, which is poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. He has been given to us. Only in Christ can we exhibit humility, holiness of mind, and be motivated by biblical love rather than our own desires. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for these devotions. Thank you for what you've done in the past, present, and what you're going to be doing in the future. Be with us now as we go through your day. Thank you for the devotions. Now, Lord, here are my four requests for my family and their extended families. Pour out your wisdom on them so they don't take their eyes off you. My second request was for everybody I went to school with and all those that were in the other classes plus every college in the United States and their extended families. Pour out your wisdom on them so that they won't take their eyes off you. My third request, Lord, is for those that I have on Facebook that I say are my friends that I've never met and their extended families. Pour out your wisdom on them so that they won't take their eyes off you. And as for me, Lord, Please, no mind games today. Keep pouring that wisdom on me from now until I do this tomorrow, if I'm still alive. Thank you. The Lord, keep my heart pure and right with yours. And I ask all these things in your name. Amen. Okay, have a beautiful Monday.